high, the 6.4, the correlation. So I introduced the three types of correlation. The first one is Pearson's correlation coefficient, R. So this is the most common correlation coefficient. Usually we say correlation, so that is Pearson's correlation. And second one is Spearman's correlation that we use the row for this textbook. And the, the, that is a kind of non-parametric version. So um, for example, that we can use that for the rank of the um, observations or uh, uh, something like that. So the, it's robust against outliers and the, we don't really have any the distributional assumption um, to have to see the meaning of the correlation. And the third one is the Kendall correlation, tal. So that is similar to Spearman's correlation, but the slightly uh, simpler definition. Okay, so Pearson, Spearman, and Kendall. And here, let me study Pearson's correlation first. So the Pearson's, uh, population correlation coefficient between two variables x and y um, that is defined by the, this quantity. And so this quantifies the strengths of linear relationship between x and y. So maybe it's good to see the uh, examples first. So Pearson's correlation coefficient is basically um, one, if X and Y have perfect relationship. Now here, the X axis and Y axis are missing, but we ask, you can assume that for every figure that we have X and Y. And if X and Y has perfect relationship, that means that all points are on the same line, then Pearson's correlation is one. So that is the same for this one, this one, this one, regardless of the slope. If slope is negative, we say actually the Pearson's correlation is negative one. And in the middle, if we have some strong relationship between X and Y, positive strong relationship, but uh, still we have some noise, then Pearson's correlation is lower, 0 0.8, or even the smaller correlation, 0 0.4, zero. So this is just the random, X and Y are independent. And negative relationship, we have the negative the Pearson's correlation. And correlation of zero means that we have no linear trend. So if we make a trend line, it's either flat or it does not exist. So no relationship such as X increases, then Y increase, or the X increases, then Y decrease. We don't have such relationship for these figures. But still, that there are some patterns. Clearly, that we have some maybe quartic pattern here, and we have some pattern here. I don't know how to say it, but the, it's uh, all points are on a square, tilted square. And this is quadratic pattern, and this have the combination of two quadratic patterns and the circular pattern, and we have clusters. So no linear relationship. Still, we have some nonlinear relationship. The all correlation coefficient is zero. So what's the definition? Correlation coefficient, Pearson's correlation coefficient's definition is covariance of x, y divided by the square root of variance of x times the square root of variance of y. So in, by using expectation symbol that we can write this way. So the denominator is a kind of the, um, to standardize the quantity. So the numerator is most important quantity. And the numerator is actually the expectation of the inner product of centered vector of X and the centered vector of Y. So inner product that explains the relationship between the two vectors. And here that we have the same idea. And, but the expectation uh, disturbs um, because when we know we just want to know the relationship between X and Y. The location doesn't really matter. So we centered X and we centered Y also. So essentially R is defined by this so-called covariance. Covariance. Okay, so correlation coefficient for sample. Okay, so variable X and Y, for example, weight and height, we have some true the correlation coefficient, but the 
um, we can only observe observation samples. And the based on the sample with finite observations, we have to uh, estimate that the correlation quotient. So in this um, textbook and lecture, we use the R hat to represent the sample correlation quotient. Sub x y over s x times s y. S sub x y is the estimate for covariance. So just the summation of x i minus x bar times y i minus y bar over n minus one. And s sub x is the standard deviation. So just the square root of the sample variance and s sub y is defined similarly. Then we have also another formula for the variance here. Yeah, and s sub x y is called sample covariance of x and y. So the one reason that, that we define variance by sum of squares, sum of squares, is that we can easily generalize the concept to covariance. For example, if S, S sub X is defined as summation of X i minus X square absolute value over N minus one, then it's harder to generalize it into S sub X y. So that is what, one reason that we defined the sum of squares um, in variance. And some other expressions. So anyway, we use computer to calculate it. So I don't really care about this, but the, um, yeah, at first the n minus one can be canceled. So that is a kind of trivial. And also um, with some algebra that you can prove that S sub X, Y is summation of xyi xi, xi, yi minus the summation of xi times summation of yi over n. Yeah. So this is uh, just the, you know, the, um, just expand this term, xi minus x bar times yi minus y bar. Then uh, for example, the term of xi times uh, y bar, then take summation over i, then we have summation of xi's. And that becomes n times x bar. And using that um, property, then we can simplify the expression and we can get this. If you use, so if you're gonna calculate sample correlation by hand, maybe uh, this is slightly faster way. Equation 13 is slightly faster. Yeah, and this is the um, graph again. And some properties. R is always between negative one and positive one. Yeah, so another way to put this is S sub X, Y is always less than S sub X, S sub Y. So this is basically um, comes from the Schwartz inequality. Um, probably maybe you have proved the, um, the inner product of X and Y that does not exceed the um, product of absolute value of X and the product, uh, sorry, the product of absolute value of X and absolute value of Y. I mean the Euclidean lengths of X and Y. Um, and we have basically the same proof for this. And R is equal to one if X, I and Y, I have perfect positive linear relationship. That is that all points are on the straight line with the positive slope. R is positive if xi and yi have positive linear relationship. That means xi increases, then yi tends to increase. Not always, but tends to increase. R is equal to zero, no relationship, but there may be some nonlinear relationship. R is negative, xi and yi have negative linear relationship. R is negative one, then perfect negative. So all points are on the straight line with a negative slope. So this is true for both R and R hat. And why this property holds? So this is one explanation. So basically, the except for denominator, the correlation coefficient is summation of xi minus x bar times yi minus y bar. And the sign of the each component, so i's component, so this the uh, product depends on the sign of xi minus x bar 
and yi minus y bar. So think about the center of the data. X bar y bar is the center of the data. And if we have positive relationship between X and Y, most observations are in a quadrant one or a quadrant three. And in quadrant one, the XI is larger than X bar and YI is larger than Y bar. So the, this is basically positive, positive. So product is positive. And the, in quadrant three, the XI, maybe this time XJ, XJ is less than X bar. So the first term is negative. And the second term also, the YJ tends to be negative. So both are negative. So um, this point is negative times negative, so positive. So that means for most observations, xi minus x bar times yi minus y bar is positive. Maybe some exceptions here, but the, anyway, we take summation. So um, overall, the correlation coefficient, sample correlation coefficient is becomes positive. And the negative case, the, the other thing, the, the, the other way around happens. So most observations are rather in quadrant two or quadrant four. And for example, in the quadrant two, the xi is smaller than x bar, but yi is larger than x bar. So these points, the, this is negative times positive. So that is negative. And the quadrant four, again, this is positive times negative. So this is again negative. So most points have negative value. So it takes summation, but still it's likely to have a negative value. If no pattern, or even if we have a pattern, it's non, uh, no linear relationship, then observations are almost evenly distributed in one, two, three, four. So in such a case, the um, sample correlation coefficient is around zero. So that is the reason that the, um, the properties in discussed in the previous slide, the holes for, uh, hold for the uh, correlation coefficient.